Hey everybody, it's David Sparks, and I'm here to show you what's new in version 2.2 of Fantastical. The Flexibits team has been hard at work for a year on this, and there's some great new features, so let's get started. Fantastical now fully supports Microsoft Exchange. To set it up, just go to the Fantastical Preferences, and then to the Accounts tab, and you can see on the list of accounts, Exchange. I've already got one set up here, but to set up a new one, just hit the plus button, then select Exchange, click Continue, and you can enter the Exchange account credentials and get set up. But since I've already got one set up, let me show you how it works. If I want to create a new event, let's say I'm going to do lunch with uh, Daisy on Wednesday, so I'll say Wednesday, 12 p.m., lunch with Daisy, and this is using all the parsing that I've shown in prior videos for Fantastical. Uh, and then I can, if I want, select a calendar for it. So I will go and select the Exchange Calendar. And just like that, I've created a new event in the Exchange Calendar for Wednesday at noon. Now if I select the event, I can do more with it. For instance, Fantastical supports Categories, which is a Microsoft Exchange feature. I just need to click on this arrow to see the Category list, and I can start adding categories. In Microsoft Exchange, you can actually add multiple categories to a single event and you can unselect them if you want. If you have multiple selected and you want to change to an entirely different category in Fantastical, just hold down the Option key and click on that new category, and it'll remove the prior categories and just add the new one. Using Microsoft Exchange calendars in Fantastical, you can also see attendee availability for other people, and I'm going to show you that later, but for now just understand that Microsoft Exchange works great in Fantastical. Fantastical now fully supports attendee availability. Now, attendee availability is a calendar function that looks at the calendars of your friends or coworkers and lets you know when they're also available. In order for this function to work, you've got to be in a calendaring system that supports it, like Google Calendars does, Microsoft Exchange, and most implementations of CalDAV. iCloud Calendar, however, does not support it. So let's see it in action. All right, let's create an appointment so I can show you calendar availability. I'm going to set a meeting for March 22nd, and it'll be 10 to 11, and I'll call it the Logo Design Meeting. And uh, I need to put it into an Exchange calendar because that supports attendee availability where iCloud does not, and I need to invite a friend. So I'm going to hit the down arrow and go to the Invitee field. Now in Fantastical, you can add an invitee by just typing the name. So I'm going to add my friend Kent. And you can see as I started typing Kent's name, his name just showed up, so I'll hit the down arrow and the return key, and now he's on the invitee list. And immediately, Fantastical will give me some feedback. Now, Kent is also on an exchange account, so it has his attendee availability as well, and there's a little X next to his name, and that's telling me that Kent is not available when I set that meeting. So if I go down here and click on Check Availability, you'll see this nice uh, kind of graph that shows availability. I'm using Michael's account, and you can see I'm unavailable uh, from about noon to 2.45 because, you know, we take long lunches in my company. And then there's Kent's availability below, and he's unavailable from 7 to 1 p.m. So I can drag this appointment out of that unavailability and put it right there, and you'll see that the icon next to Kent's name changed to a check mark, which means he is available. You can also see while I did that that it automatically updated in the background here on the screen. Uh, so this is just a great way to find availability. I can cycle through the days if I want. So you can see the various availability that Kent has. Um, in addition to showing the all-day calendar, I can also have it just show the work hours, which sometimes makes it a little more visible. I can even have it show the next available time. So if I go back here to this Tuesday and I put the meeting in the morning, and I click on Next Availability, it'll jump the appointment right up here to about 2.45 after my long lunch. And you'll see it did it there and both over here on the screen. If you would like to get a bigger view, just click on this icon right there and it opens a bigger view that fills the screen. Once again, this is showing all day, but I could also have it show just work hours if I wanted. And let's say I'm gonna go to Wednesday now. And Kent is busy, it looks like he's got a lunch appointment. So I'm going to move over here within these dotted lines, which indicate availability. And I'm going to click on 1 p.m. 
And when I do that, just watch down here and you'll see the event will jump over to Wednesday at 1 p.m. And we've still got that check mark, so everything's good. If I'd put it in the noon hour, you'll see that the check mark would again turn to an X and I would know that Kent's unavailable. So I'll go ahead, once again, move it to 1 o'clock. I've set the meeting at a time that everybody's available. And I can close that out and hit Add Event. And I've sent the invitation off to Kent awaiting his approval. Another interesting trick with these group event calendars in Exchange is when you delete them, uh, you can send a message. So I'm going to go ahead and now delete this. So Kent's going to get a note from me saying that the appointment's been deleted. And with Exchange, I have the ability to send a cancellation message. So I'll go ahead and hit the check mark there and say, not yet, logo isn't done. When I press the delete button, it'll send a message to Kent canceling the meeting and explaining to him why. So I'll go ahead and do that, and it's done. If you work in a team, attendee availability is crucial, and now it's fully supported in Fantastical. If you like to print your calendars, you're going to love Fantastical. Here I am in the week view in Fantastical, so I'll go up to the File menu and click Print. I could also do this by just hitting the keyboard combination Command-P. Once you do that, it opens this great print preview. And in the print preview, you have control over a lot of settings about the way your printed calendar is going to look. Now, currently, it's in the week view because that's where I started. It always follows the view. But I can change it if I want, like if I want the day view or the month or the year. And I can do this also with keyboard combinations. So I'll hit Command-4 for the given year or the list view, which is Command-5. I'm going to go back now to the week view, though. And you'll see when I did that, it returns to the current week. And I want to see next week. So I'll go ahead and click Starts Next Week. And I've got this great view again. Now I can change my calendar sets. You know, there's various calendar sets you can use in Fantastical. I can also select and deselect individual calendars. So if I wanted to turn off the Exchange calendar, I would just click this button. And those events would come off, or I could put them back on. Now, there's some additional view options as well. You can see all day events, or you can turn them off. For instance, Daylight Savings is here on the 13th. I'll go ahead and click this button, and it'll go away. If I click it, it'll go back. I can also show or hide timed events. And I can even put the calendar week numbers at the top left section of the screen. See, you can see it's there. It's calendar week 11, but I'll turn that off again. There's a nice mini calendar up in the right corner. You can turn that on or off with this toggle. And you even have this nice key showing you the color code for each of the various calendars with events. You can turn that off or on as well in these settings. And if you're going to be printing to black and white calendars, you can click this button and it'll give you a nice preview of how it would look. Uh, you can also change the text size if you like. I'm gonna change it back to medium here. And if you wanna zoom in, just use this slider. You can zoom in or out. This print view is really great. Uh, for instance, if you want to print out a calendar without any events on it, like you just want a nice monthly calendar, you could set that up in Fantastical. Just go to the month view and say hide all day events and timed events. And you've got a nice clean calendar for March that you could write on or print out or do whatever you want with. I'm going to put it all back together now and go back to the week view, though, because I think I'm about ready to, to print this calendar. So when I'm ready, I'll click the Continue button. And that brings up the print button. I just press that button and I print it out of my printer. If I want a PDF version, I can go ahead and click PDF and then save as PDF and I'm good to go. Using Fantastical, printing your calendar has never been easier. Fantastical does a great job of finding the location of new events as you type them. So I'm gonna create a new event here and I'm gonna say Wednesday, 1 to 4 p.m., check out Star Wars Exhibit at Disneyland. And as I type the word Disneyland in, Fantastic Hal will automatically figure out that that's a location and then go figure out the address. I already did it, so I'm going to go hit arrow down, and I'm going to hit enter. And it just created a calendar event called Check Out Star Wars Exhibit, and it has the location right there. I'll go ahead and click Add Event. <laughs> And you can see it's added to my calendar. With Fantastical, you can add locations to your event as fast as you can type them. 
In today's world, it's just inevitable you're going to need to work with people in other time zones, particularly when you're setting calendar events. And Fantastical has you covered on this as well. On your calendar in Fantastical, you'll see this listing of the time on the left side of the screen. But if you look over on the right side of the screen, you'll see the time zones are there as well. Now, by default, it's going to have the same time zone uh, that you're currently in. So I'm in Pacific, so you'll see 9 a.m. equates to 9 a.m. here. But if I go up to the top and click on this little arrow, you'll see that I have other time zones available to me. So if I'm working with someone in the United Kingdom, I can click on this button right here, and I can know that noon in California equates to 7 p.m. in the United Kingdom. This makes setting events really simple with people in different time zones. Now, if you don't need this, you can turn it off. To do that, just go up to the Fantastical Settings, Preferences, and then go to Advance, and you can turn it off with this checkbox right here. But you're going to love it. I keep it turned on. Just to show you a few more tricks, you can go up here and change this at will. So if I'm going to go to Australian Central Western Standard Time, I can do that. Uh, I can go in and I can add additional ones if I want. So I could type in Boston, and it will give me Boston. Or I could even type in the time zone itself, like if I want to say Central Standard Time. I'll go Other CST, and I got Central, uh, well, actually Central Daylight Time right now. And everything just works. Now, in addition to week view, you can also get this in the day view. And you can see it's, once again, CST. I'll go back to United Kingdom. And if you find out that things are just getting too messy in this list, you can clear it out. Just hit the Clear Menu button. And then it's going to clear all those out, and you can just add new ones. I love this feature. And if you ever have to work with someone in a different time zone, you're going to love it, too. Another cool feature in Fantastical is drag and drop preview. And let me show you how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and start creating a new event. It's going to be 1 to 3 p.m. on Tuesday, and I'm going to meet with editor. And you'll see as I'm doing it, not only does it fill in the data right down below, it also creates the event on the calendar. With drag and drop preview, I can go over to the calendar view and then start dragging that event around, like I'm going to move it to earlier in the day. And when I do that, it automatically updates the data here in the event. In fact, I can pull it to the next day if I want. If I move it to Wednesday, you'll see that the date changes. I can drag it back to Tuesday. I can even change the length. I'm going to pull it down to make it longer. In addition to working in the week view, this also works in the month view. So now I can not only have it on this day, I can drag it down to the following week. And when I do that, you'll see that the date updates over here. So drag and drop preview makes it really easy to work with your events both on the calendar and in text using Fantastical. Just about every calendar app you can buy is always going to start the month on the first week of the month and it's going to start the week view on Sunday. This is a legacy thing and it goes all the way back to printed calendars. But that really doesn't make sense. It makes a lot more sense to see the week going forward from the current day, and the same with the month view from the current week. And you can set that up in Fantastic. I'll just go over to the Preferences and select Start Week on Today or Selected Day and Start Month View on Current or Selected Week. Now let me show you what that's going to do to the views. When I go over to the Month View, you're going to see it starts here on the week of the 13th because it's the current week as I record this. I'm going to see a lot more data down below, and I'm going to see a lot less from prior weeks, which I probably don't need as much. Uh, when I go to the week view, it's the same thing. Uh, I'm going to select today, and you're going to see today's on a Sunday, so it looks this way. But if I select a different day in the future, let's say Tuesday, you're going to see one week forward from that. And when I log into Fantastic Al on Tuesday, this is the view I'm going to have. This is much more useful because it shows me the weekend and even the following Monday. This is just a little feature in Fantastical, but trust me, once you turn it on, you will never turn it off. When you're working in your calendar, sometimes it's easy to lose track of what day you're actually working on. Uh, Fantastical has a couple visual cues that can help you out with this. The first is that the Today view is always in blue. You can see I've currently Today selected, and it's got this blue shading to the date, and also the number of the day is circled in blue, so that's today. 
Another nice feature is whatever day you're working on is in gray. So if I go over here and select the 15th on Tuesday, you'll see that that date just turned gray. Now today remains uh, with the blue circle, but it's not selected because I'm not working on it. I'm working on the 15th. If I move that to the 17th, it would do the same. You also get this feature in month view. So in month view, you can see today is circled in blue and whatever day I select is gonna show up in gray. This is one of those nice little touches that can really help once you know about it. One problem you'll have with a lot of calendar applications is the inability to work on multiple events at once. That's not the case in Fantastical. In Fantastical, you can select multiple events by holding down the command key. And then once you've selected them, you can right click on them and you can do things with them. For instance, you can change them to a different calendar if you want. Um, here I'm gonna select them again. You could also duplicate them, delete them, or even mail the events to a friend. Working with multiple events is no problem in Fantastical. Fantastical has this great year view with a heat map and it shows you what are the busiest days as you're planning out into the future. The team at FlexiBits has put a lot of work into this and the heat map in the Fantastical year view is more granulated than you're gonna see anywhere else. That way you'll easily find the busiest days as you're scheduling into the future. This is just one more nice little touch in Fantastical. So there you have it, my overview of what's new and amazing in version 2.2 of Fantastical. A lot of work went into this update and I hope you enjoy it.